What's going on guys and welcome back to another satisfactory video where last time we created this building right here to produce all of our oil needs that includes heavy oil residue resin and yes plastic and rubber they get sent to the storage and then sunk when necessary but that leaves us with one little problem we are making the fuel and the only place we can send it is into these uh, these fluid buffers but to utilize that as a power source we need to unlock the expanded power infrastructure which will give us the fuel generators and to make them we need heavy modular frames and computers and we're not making either so in today's video, I want to address the heavy modular frame and I want to turn this area into this. So yes, as you can see, we have quite a little bit to do. But first, we need to start at the source. And yes, we're going to need iron, which we'll be extracting from this area, precisely right here, because it's got six pure iron nodes. But also, we're going to need some coal, because we need to make steel. And we're going to pull that from this location, because we have three pure coal and one normal node. So the first thing we need to do is lay the foundation. So I did that. And of course... I added a hyper cannon so I can get back to the base and grab whatever we need from the storage. And then I can just use that one over there to fly back and, uh, yeah, Bob's your uncle. Okay, so I was kind of flying through the hyper tube during the recording and shit happened. Uh, <laughs> I landed safely, but as you know, when you land, you get half a heart left. And then I got attacked by a goddamn hog as soon as I landed. So rip me. So as you can see, I've been a little busy. I've extracted the limestone and the iron and placed it on this bus line, crosses this canyon, which goes extremely close to the moth and then makes its way to our location where we're going to build the products we need. So remember, if you're enjoying the video, to remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji. Right, so we're bringing in three limestone lines and we're also bringing in six iron. Well, technically not six because this line right here is not sending anything. That's because I can't put a miner down because we have a bit of a boulder in the way, which I need a novelist to actually explode, which I might do this episode. So the recipe we're going to use, we're going to use in the refinery because I want to use the pure iron ingot recipe, which is this one right here, which requires 35 iron ore per minute and 20 water, which outputs 65 iron ingots. And then 65 times by four is uh, 260. So technically, we can only put four of these in a line to maximize a Mark III belt. Because as you know, as a Mark III belt, it only transports 270 resources per minute. And then if we do 270 divided by 35, that's going to give us a super weird number. But if we do 245 divided by 7, that will give us 35 right there. So if we put down seven refineries in a line, that means for every four refineries, we'll then be able to put down a... Um, merging line for our Mark III belts to send our iron ingots over 260. And then if we do six lines in total, because we're bringing six iron lines, that means we need now technically 14 in a line. So seven on this side, seven on that side, four on this side will go into a 260 line, four on that side will go into a 260 line, two on this side will merge with two on this side to make a 260 line. That leaves us with one refinery here, one refinery here, which will merge together. And then when we bring in the other uh, four lines, we need to do exactly the same. But with the two on the end of this line, it will actually merge with the two on the end of this line to make a 260 line. And then on the third line, the M2 was just going to be solo and can be left alone and just merge together to make a 130 line. So we want to place down seven of these in a row. Three, four, five, six, seven. Or oh, we might need to extend that foundation right there. Brrr. Brrr done um and then i want to quickly well figure out what i want to do here so uh my mergers are going to come towards me like this and that's going to go to four machines just like this so that then will make a 260 line um and then these two are going to merge together so i want to make sure that has enough room to come through uh so i basically want to just kind of wait could i not just do that yeah i could i could just do that 
So that's what I went and did. So you can see over here, we have four machines going into four mergers. Same for that side. And then we've got four mergers here, which is coming in from that one, this one, and then these two right here. So that's a 260 line. And then we've got these N2 here. So that one and that one going uh, and merging into this one which then merges with these lines over here. Yes, I have replaced, uh, well, I have placed the rest of the machines down and kind of made this little bit of, I would say organized belts, uh, kind of, kind of. So all of these belts right here will hold 260 iron ingots from all of these refineries. Even this section right here is a duplication of that one over there. It's just that all the belts are headed in this direction. I don't know if this is going to be the final direction they're going to head. Um, I just don't know what I've got planned ahead just yet. And then if we make our way to the end over here, uh, we can actually see I put down a couple of machines here. So, well, basically six... Uh, six machines because these are going to be doing alternate wet concrete and this requires 120 limestone so what i'm going to do is i'm going to underclock the miners that are bringing in the ore uh, and make them to 240 so 240 limestone will come into two refineries each and then 200 water as well uh, so 100 water into that one 100 water into that one and then that will give us a total of 160 concrete per uh two lines so 180, 180, and 180. Okay, so after stress testing the uh, lines, everything seems to be fine and dandy. So what I mean by stress testing, I just put everything going into sinks, making sure that my machines are up and running, and then the correct amount of items are being reduced and nothing's being backlogged. We can see that this, um, this line here is a little bit more, you know, uh, got a lot less ingots than these two. Well, at least three. Uh, that's because this one right here is coming from these two machines, which is technically going to get a merge line from there. So I could really start setting up these. And if we go underneath now, I've started working on this stuff. So we've got the pipe coming in, which is bringing all the water. And I do like, as you know, like I normally do, always do the underflooring. Makes things look cleaner for me. Um, and just kind of organizing. I've even put these little, like, painted beams in the corner. It's kind of make, you know, clip these pipes through here. So it looks a bit like it's got some supports. And I've added just a bit of colouring and a like a like an industrial vibe. Because I feel like that's the direction I kind of want to take this build. And then these empty slots right here are going to be for the next section. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of the direction I'm taking it right now. And it's starting to look uh, pretty cool. Kind of... I never really, like, organise underneath, to be honest. Like, make it a little bit different. So with this up and running now, I guess we can kind of power the next ones. And maybe even the rest, to be honest. Um, because then we've got basically this, the iron ingots sitting there. And then we need to get these iron ingots and then merge it with the coal that's going to come from that direction over there. So we're going to have to make some curves to go around there, which will come down this cliff to go down here and then make its way through basically that little canyon right here, right where Bean is. And it's going to come straight through here and then to grab the coal from here. Right, Bean? Right. Hey! You got to shoot Bean! You missed. Ah. You little shit! Even the cat's attacking you. Oh. Hey, no, no, it's attacking me. Oi! Go to sleep, kitty cat. I got you, Bean. Don't worry. I got you. Why are you still meowing? Shut up! Okay, so as you can see, I've now added the coal lines, which is three pure and one normal, which, like I said, comes through the canyon, up this lift right here, and makes its way all the way over to, well, where we've been building. But also, I've turned on the rest of the machines. So now stir into it. You are now being hypnotized. Now subscribe. Subscribe. You little shits. So yeah, I'm just still kind of stress testing it and just letting it do its thing. Because as you know, with manifolds, you need to stress test the lines to make sure that they are efficient. So again, I've just duplicated what we've done underneath and just, it's just easy. Just kind of copy what I did previously. I best show you as well that we have got our water extractors overclocked to 300 per minute. And also look at the size of my inventory. I installed a mod called uh, Inventory 300 Plus which allows me to do this because, as you know, I build all of this on the live streams. And to save me time from going backward and forward all the time, I just kind of installed that mod, which helps me out a bunch. So remember, if you ever want to watch these, you can check out my second YouTube channel in case you want to see every minute, every second, every hour of us creating this. And go over there 
Uh, give it a click, which will be in the description below. But also, you can watch me do this live right over on Twitch. Chat, I need you to say hello. I need you to say hello. Everybody say hello. Oh, fuck. I need to do that again. I wasn't doing display capture. Yeah, come and join us over here on the on the, the live streams. You can see me kind of do this stuff um, live. It's kind of fun time. So I've kind of decided that this belt right here is starting to annoy me, that it's just empty and we can't utilize it yet. So I'm going to head northwest, take a little swim, and then we're just going to jump straight off here and then fall down the waterfall. And then right in front of me, should be some sulfur nodes right here. That's because I want to make some nobelisks. When did I kill these? Bean, did you kill some hogs? So yeah, I think I want to make some sulfur. I'm not going to set like a fully automated system up. I'm probably just going to handcraft some black powder and stuff and then make some nobelisks because I do want to like, well, blow up that boulder. And I think I'm going to do the one up at the call as well because why the hell not? So the first thing I need to do is go into the mam and then go into the sulfur and I need to get some, well, sulfur. So since we have a power line right there, I'm just going to place down a Mark II miner, power it, grab the required sulfur and then unlock the first, well, thing we need to unlock. And then we need black powder, which we need more sulfur. So I'll just grab more and unlock the next one. And the next, I need 50 black powder, which means I grab more sulfur and then go into the equipment workbench and just handcraft 50 and then unlock that one. And then to make the Nobelist detonator, I need basically an object scanner, steel beams and cables. So I'll just make myself an object scanner, then make myself a Nobelist detonator, make myself some more black powder, then make some Nobelists. And then, bada bing, bada boom. <laughs> we can then blow up the boulder. You are free, Iron Nod. You are free. And there we go. All six iron lines are now full and up to capacity. I've also now added the outputs and the inputs to the concrete. So we are making 180 concrete per minute on each line. Well, technically, no, I changed it. Um, I made it to 8160, 240 per line. So we've got two lines. I don't know why. There was probably one of you would have already commented and going, oh, you could have put it to 240 bits. Yeah, but now I'm answering you back. We are commenting on your comment. Huh? 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 Anyway, so yeah, we've got 240 lines now, two 240s, um, and then these are just going to sit here, and that's eventually is going to go to the encased industrial beams, because as we know, in the manufacturer, the uh, heavy modular frames do need encased industrial beams, especially with the recipe that we are going to use, which will just be the standard one, which is going to need 10 heavy modular frames, 30 steel pipes, 10 encased industrial beams, and 200 screws. And for the screws, we're just going to make the steel screw recipe. We are making the 10 heavy modular frames, which we will be making here. Everything that this required is going to get built in this. We're not going to import anything. So it seems everything seems optimal right here. So all I need to do is just remove it and pop just like that. It's deleted. Okay, so the next thing I've done uh, is I've now started to make the um, steel ingots. Um, so we can see we have the foundries going down here, which is bringing in the uh, 260 um, iron ingots, but then also the coals coming in as well, which, as you know, we kind of did it earlier, which is then being directly into one-to-one -one ratio, which is going to make steel beams. So it's a pretty simple setup. We can see that the 40 iron ingots, 40 coal, go into 60, uh, will make 60 steel ingots. The 60 steel goes straight into a constructor to make 15 steel beams. And that goes all the way along here. And then I've kind of done, I'm about to do a, well, a little bit of a uh, stress test to make sure everything's up and running. But uh, what I'm thinking about doing as well is if we grab ourselves a constructor real quick and look at the steel pipes, the steel pipes are near enough exactly the same. So... It just, it just requires 30 steel ingots instead of 60. But more than likely, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to overclock all of these by 200% to give me 60 steel ingots on the input. And on the output, it's going to be 40 steel pipes. And then it basically be symmetrical to this whole setup. So I just need to get this and duplicate this right there. Yep, and as you guessed, I have done that. We have doubled this whole line here, which was basically a replica of that. Overclocked all these constructors at 200%, like I said, just to make sure that we are receiving the correct steel ingots per minute. 
And then I've also added some assemblers down here with a resource sink, which is bringing in the concrete and the steel pipes from this production line to actually make the encased industrial beams, which is using the encased industrial pipe alternate recipe. Because like I said, encased industrial pipes are... In case, in case industrial beams need to go into the manufacturer for the heavy modular frames. So, um, I am bringing the concrete from underneath here now. So, I've kind of done this. Um, I don't know what to do with this section here just yet. I think I'm more than likely going to rip all of this foundation out here and make it like this. So, it kind of creates something very more industrial it's just i've got to replace all these cables and it's going to be a pain in the bloody backside i'm not going to lie to you but because we also need to make uh the reinforced plates and well to be honest we need to make the frames and if we go backtrack from that recipe we need to make reinforced plates we also need to make the rods the screws and everything and i think i'm going to do a second tier above this where the um plates and the screws are going to merge together uh, to actually make the reinforced plates which will then sink itself We'll do some form of smart splitting as we normally do uh, and then get all that being sent into some modular frames which i'm probably going to do right above here and then send everything to the manufacturers on this side of the actual facility so yeah i need to get all this powered now and to be honest our power consumption is not the best hence the reason i've had to add an additional 600 megawatts to this line here because if you remember in the last episode this was actually missing well a, a few little coal gens which means now we're making 5700 megawatts which is still very low for well for my builds we can kind of see we're only consuming 2000 megawatts but that's because i've had to shut everything down and i don't really want to and i'm not gonna lie this is kind of coming on pretty well and once this powers up this is gonna consume so much power because what i'm doing right now is i'm literally juggling power between both of these facilities and this right here is a new rendering i don't know if it's a bug or something but this is new since update 7. It looks like asphalt. It looks like we're living on bloody tarmac. Okay, so as you can see, I've now added the reinforced plates, which is right at the end of this line. And I've done have to do a little bit of, like... It's all symmetrical if you think about it, right? So I've got my iron ingots, which I've now moved from this time. And I have created the gap, which I talked about uh, a couple of seconds ago. And I brought in the ingots going up here. Two lines are being split off, one into this side, one into this side. This means that I've got uh, eight constructors going here, which if we look inside and we do plates, eight times 30 is 240. So 240 ingots are coming this way, uh, meaning we are making 180 plates on that side, 180 plates on that side, 360 in total. Each of these assemblers need 90 plates per minute, and they also need 250 screws. So if we backtrack this way, you'll see two constructors at the end, which are consuming the steel beams from downstairs, which are the two lines, well, the one line we set up. These are making 260 per minute. They come across this Mark III belt, head down here. They then do a right or a left, go into a smart splitter. This will then put 250 into here, and then the additional 10 will get put on this Mark I belt and move around with the additional plates that the assembler does not need. Then merges together, and then it merges together with a reinforced plate, and then it goes into a smart splitter, which diverts the reinforced plates to the left, and then any overflow, meaning the plates and screws, will go forward, and then this whole side here is basically exactly what I've just done there, but flipped, and then reinforced plates are being sent there. And I'm going to now put a belt going along this way to go along the middle, which will go down to go into... Um, oh, no. Well, I don't know yet where I'm going to put the frames. But we'll see. But then that's all that's being synced. So this is just kind of being 100% efficient right now. Um, and everything is fine and dandy. Um, but I am having to make quite a few jumps here because this is a large build and there's so much to take in, especially into my normal 20 to 25 minute videos. And like I said before, I think I'm just going to extend this foundation and take it this way and then do some assemblers up here with the actual frames itself. And I need to figure out what I need to do for that. So as you can tell, I figured it out. So all the reinforced plates that we're making, which is 30 in total, go into these 15 uh, assemblers right here. And in the assemblers, uh, they require two per minute. So obviously two times 15 is 30 and steel pipes as well, which means now we're making... 15 times 3, and if we do the maths, 15 times by 3 should be 45. 45. Perfect. And this is just a simple basic setup we've gone through before, and I don't need to show you again. It's just just a different belt system, I guess. 
Uh, then I've got the frames coming all down this merger line right here, which come on a Mark 1, because obviously 45 per minute. We don't need it on a Mark 2. And then it merges with the encased industrial beams to make a sushi line, which then goes this way into these smart splitters, which then go into the manufacturers with the pipes and screws. And talking about screws, we're just basically just pulling off the steel beams from what's being sent upstairs to go into these three constructors right here, which are making the steel screw alternate recipe to send out 260 screws per minute. This is very um, a work in progress, but for right now, it's doing what I need it to do, and it's going into the storage over here to make my heavy modular frames. So in total, we're actually making six heavy modular frames per minute, and that's for this whole build. This entire build was just to only make six frames per minute. But if you think about it, we've got a lot of stuff we can actually utilize from here. Like, for example, all them excess uh, iron ingots we've got there, we can utilize that for something else later on. Even if we want to double this, especially when we unlock Mark IV belts, which is going to give us 480 resources per minute. But before we move on to that, we need to make computers. But that will wait until another episode. But that can't come quick enough because with this building right here, I need to always keep running down here. I then need to make a hole in the floor, go into here, and then literally grab the fluid buffer right here, click full pipe network, and flush it every now and again. And the reason to do that is so we can start making fuel again and to push the resin along so I can make the empty canisters, which then go into the packager for me to make package fuel because I keep running out of it, which means I won't be able to use my jetpack again. So the fuel gens can't come quick enough. So now the only thing we need to do to this is just do some design work and make sure it's not like a floating platform, which is what it is right now. So I think I'm going to stick with the normal colors and I want to kind of add, add some lights in there as well. So I'm just looking at these refineries here and these have got the base color of orange and I think everything is a little bit monochrome right now it's a little bit too dark so i think i'm just going to grab my swatch three which is my orange and paint all of these walkways orange uh, and kind of create some orange accents every now and again because i don't want it to be too dull but i want to make a like a focus point on where we as a pioneer can walk around but also i think it's going to be very beneficial if we use kind of like the floodlight towers because they are very industrial and i think it kind of works for like construction site kind of stuff especially with my designs so i think i'm like going to place some down um, and just see how it looks. And then I'm just going to connect this up here, up to the power line, well, the power grid here, uh, and then just assign the, the power manually. So I'm just going to push that into the middle and then just attach that up to there. And then I'm going to give it to the orange light so we can kind of keep more of that going. And then just kind of scatter these around like this. But because these are tall structures, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to grab a painted steel beam if i can get one to go in here if it will let me i know it will well actually let's just put that wait no remove that if i put this down here and then that down there i can then put one here and then i'm just going to raise that all the way no let's get it in further no maybe we'll just keep it there kind of take that up the spine kind of like that i need to get up here now and this is going to be a pain in my butt and then once up here i'm just going to place these signs around just like this, you can't really tell what it looks like down from like the bottom, especially the clipping kind of thing. And then I'm just going to kind of paint these red just to kind of give it like, you know, beware. There's bloody objects here. I'm talking to them like the bloody moth right now because he's the only one that's in the sky, right? So I'll just make sure I set my layout to basically that, remove the text, and then set that to three. And then Bob's your uncle, right? And then just paste that all the way around just like that. So when it goes nighttime, it just kind of looks a bit like this. It just kind of adds something to it. But I'm definitely going to clean it up when, when I do all the rest of them as well. And I'm probably going to try and get that to go in a little bit further. But that's a little design idea for you in case you wanted to use it. I'd never thought about doing it. Um, and we definitely want to add lights around here because it gets very dark, um, especially underneath. Uh, and I think what I'm going to do as well is use the, um, the frame walls and kind of just put these along here where the uh, underflooring is to kind of create some form of like little boundary kind of things. Um, and yeah, I think that's what I'm going to do. So that's exactly what I did. You can see we've added a lot more lights over here now and we've added a lot more of like aesthetic stuff. 
And I think it was a great idea adding like the orange accent just to make it pop a little bit more and just make it a little bit more industrial, kind of like an oil rig, but technically not an oil rig. And everything's kind of looking pretty sweet. And I actually moved the actual uh, frame walls from here down one. And then I also added these lights under here, just like this, to create just a, you know, just to fill in this wall here uh, and just to see what can be done with it. And I kind of liked it, so I kind of kept it. I did loads of signs just along here, just kind of like little fake lights kind of stuff. And uh, yeah, I kind of turned this one as well and made it a lot more cleaner. So as you can see now that the the actual, like the beam is actually further inside the machine now. So it's not as, you know, popping out as much. Um, and we added a lot more of the to the legs. And I kept like the orange accent going along with the, the legs of the actual um, structure itself. So it's not floating anymore, which is cool. I also added a frame to the bus line that we kind of created very early on in the uh, the video. And then the fun thing about industrial builds, you can kind of be a bit more less OCD. So just like I did down here, it looks a bit more like a construction site or just like a random mine location now. And just added the, the tall lights and just scattered them around everywhere. So when you're going up from it from here, you can kind of see it kind of makes a trail to actually the whole mining facility in the distance. But saying this is something I don't normally build because I always build it within buildings and make things very modern. The industrial feel, I kind of liked it. And it was kind of fun to build. So I think that is new enough everything that we needed to do. I needed to make heavy modular frames and we achieved that. Plus a lot more, because like I said, we can utilize these ingots elsewhere and we are very, very close to trains. So without further ado, we are going to end this episode right here. So check out my other content. And if you've liked the video, please remember to like, subscribe, and also leave a comment, even if it's just an emoji. You know how we do it. So thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep smiling.